I took you along with me as I unboxed a new treasure, a vintage Daisy 660 Ricochet toy rifle. At the time, I was unsure about its future. Well, the future is now. Don't go away. Hello gang and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. When I unboxed my Daisy toy rifle, I wasn't sure if I wanted to restore it. After much thought, I have indeed decided to give this great toy a facelift. This is an amazing toy rifle and I just felt it deserved a spa day. So, let's get to it. Okay, so, you know, we talked about it in the unboxing, and I have decided I am going to restore this Daisy 660. So, the first thing I want to do is I want to get a picture of the decal. Now, I'm not entirely convinced that I'm going to replace it, but if I decide I want to, I need to make sure I have the uh, the artwork and the size so I can get everything right. So I'm just going to lay the rifle down here on my table, apply a ruler to it and take a couple pictures, make sure I have all the information I'll need. So, there are a couple videos out there that show this toy um, and show uh, how the noise maker in the uh, grip works and stuff like that. But there's not really anybody who's done a restoration, at least not that I can find out there. So, I looked at a lot of videos and I, I did a lot of research. And what, what I'm finding is that I think this is exactly the same as the Daisy BB guns. Okay, I think all they did is they removed the little chamber that holds the BBs and the little uh, barrel that goes inside the barrel. And uh, they added a noisemaker up here under this front hand grip. And I think that's all they really did. So I'm going to go ahead and go forward and hope that I'm not mistaken. Because if I am, I may find myself in Dutch here. But uh, I, I really think I should be able to do this. So what I'm doing here is I'm just removing this front hand grip. It's solid and pretty good shape. It just needs some cleaning. It's got some like paint or something on it. Uh, it's going to need a, a good cleanup. And here you can see the whole little noisemaker mechanism. Now this particular rifle, what it does is it's got this main spring in here that gives it a kick and a pop. But you see when you pull the trigger here, that spring will spin that little cog and that will vibrate that little wire and that makes a noise and then that little cylinder in front there is actually like a drum that's like a drum shell with a drum head and that little wire uh, drums on that so what you got going is pretty crazy here you've got the mainspring releasing energy it gives a kick it makes a pop it spins that little wheel. That all makes noise. The wire on the wheel makes noise. The wire vibrating on the drum makes noise. So they really put a lot into this thing. Uh, very simple. Very, very simple. You see how long it's lasted. I mean, it's lasted for a very long time. Um, you know, ingenious stuff here. Uh, I'm going to take a bunch of pictures as I go because, like I said, there's not a lot of information out there on this. And I want to make sure that I can get this all back right. Now, that wheel really is just kind of loose in there. It sits on a loose axle. It's held in by both sides. And then that hand grip actually locks it into place. So the rear stock has a <laughs> screw in the top here that just unscrews. 
and then it's held <laughs> in by these rivets. Now, I think these are tubular rivets, and it, that's the kind that works best for working on, uh, like, Tonkas. <laughs> and I, I have some tubular rivets. I have a tool for doing that, and we're going to be doing a video on that entire tool soon. But I don't think I have any tubular rivets that are long enough. So, uh, yeah, I ordered some, and for now, I'm going to end up having to put this back together using screws. Uh, if I get the right tubular rivets, maybe we'll do a quick update video on this. Anyhow, what I found here is that these tubular rivets are not really, really tight. So drilling doesn't work good. Um, the, the rivet just tends to spin in, in, in place and not really drill away. So what I'm doing is I'm using a... Uh, carbide tipped grinder and my rotary tool and I'm just grinding away the head. Be really careful here because you know any slip ups you're gonna damage the the actual metal frame of the, the toy rifle and you don't want that. So I ground that head away and I'm gonna take a little screwdriver here. I'm just gonna kinda pop it through and then pull it out. We should be able to remove the stock. Now, again, I, I kind of thought I was going to have to paint the stock and the front grip, but they're really just going to need a good cleaning, and so that's a win-win for me. And with the screw and that rivet gone, I can take this off. Now, you'll see there's two springs uh, in the stock. One is the trigger return, and the other keeps uh, some tension on the latching mechanism that will hold the, the main spring back. So I'm not even going to take those out. I'm just going to kind of clean up around them and leave them right where they're at so I don't mess it up. And now I can get my grinder out and go and attend to all the other little rivets. Okay, so this top rivet here holds the trigger assembly in. It's just one rivet that goes right through it, holds the trigger assembly in. Then we've got a lower rivet that holds the cocking lever in place. Then there's another rivet forward of that, and that is one you do not want to take out, okay? That is just a uh, basically a stop that holds the block in place that keeps the mainspring uh, inside the body of the gun. So if you take that rivet out, you're going to have to replace it. There's no need to take it out. You can uh, get the mainspring out with it in place, so leave it there, okay? Don't monkey with it. Anyhow, we've got that rivet out. We can remove the trigger assembly, and you see it's a, a couple parts. Uh, we're not going to take that apart. We're just going to clean that in the ultrasonic cleaner. But uh, basically, you've got the trigger and you've got the latching mechanism that holds the mainspring back when you cock the weapon here. <clears throat> now, you can still see it here in, in the, that picture. There's that black screw in the side of the gun. I have no idea why it's there. I don't know why they put it in. It doesn't fit. It doesn't belong. There is a hole there, but that screw's not doing anything. Not that I can tell. So I took it out and left it out. I didn't put it back. So I took that out and I also took out the rivet that's holding the cocking lever in place. Got that out. And I'm just marking the rivets in case I need to reference them uh, later on. And so I know what came from where in case uh, I, I need to pay attention to a diameter or a length or something <laughs> like that. Um, it didn't really end up being a big deal, but I marked them just in case. So this is my first opportunity to look inside of the, the uh, rifle, and I can see the main spring down in there. And what you have is you have something that looks like it might be the, the rear sight. Well, I guess it kind of is but it really is actually more important. It just slides in through a slot in the top of the rifle and it butts up against that one rivet that I said not to take out. And then the spring presses against that. And basically the spring holds that sight in and that, that sight holds the spring in. They kind of work together to keep the spring in place and ready to go. 
So all you have to do is take a little tension off of the spring and then you can pull that out. Now on the Daisy BB guns, I've seen some guys use a special tool they made with a couple of metal rods and a wooden block and they push it in through the back of the rifle to compress that spring so they can get that little block out. Well, I'm just using a screwdriver and I take a little bit of tension off the spring and then I can grab that little sight and pull it right out. Sorry, I can't see what I'm doing here really well, so I'm going to actually pick this up to do that uh, so you don't really see it come out, but there it is in my hand. It came right out. All I had to do was get a little pressure off the spring by cantile cantil cantil cantilevering it with a screwdriver, and then that all came right apart, and I could pull the main spring out. Now... Another issue I have is the end of my barrel is a little out of shape. I'll have to kind of round that back out. And it's split at the bottom. And I thought about welding that shut or soldering it, but this is how it came, so I'm going to actually leave it that way. I'm just going to kind of straighten up the end. All right, I've got everything apart, so now it's time for some sandblasting. So looking at the finish on this, first of all, I don't know why it's blue, okay? And second of all, I had a hard time determining if this was uh, like a powder coat or anodized. Uh, in the end, I believe it's a powder coating of some type. Uh, we're just going to sandblast it all off. And all I'm going to do is, as far as that little drum goes, I'm just going to kind of go around it and be careful with it. I don't want to sandblast the, uh, the drum head and, and destroy it. So I'll just be careful with what I'm doing here. Keep my hand over it when I'm working near it. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all of this ugly blue finish, which, no, I will not be putting back. Yeah, I'm not going to put that blue back on because I, I saw some videos of guys restoring... Uh, BB guns, and they would actually take and make new stocks and grips uh, out of real wood, uh, things like that. And that got me to thinking, well, I'm not going to replace the stock and the front grip because uh, they're really, really nice and they're in great shape. What I am going to do is instead of uh, powder coating the, uh, the front, which was my original thought, I'm actually going to use a bluing kit for uh, applying uh, bluing to a real rifle. And uh, hopefully that works. If it doesn't, I'll re-sandblast and I'll come up with plan B, but uh, that's the idea going forward. Yes, I do realize you can't see doodly squat here, okay? Well, guess what? Neither could I, okay, even with the light in there. Uh, first of all, I need to clean my glass Second of all, I need to put a new uh, protective layer on, on the inside to make sure that I don't damage the glass. Uh, and third, if I'm going to do more sandblasting uh, in some of my videos, i got to find a way to get a camera inside the sandblast booth, maybe a GoPro or something like that. But, uh, hey, this is the best I could do. So suffice it to say, I'm sandblasting the rifle, and then we'll take it out and we'll move forward. Okay, so the rifle comes out of the sandblast cabinet looking fantastic. It did leave a little bit of a, a matte texture to it, which I don't like. So I'm going to sand this really well with some uh, 220 grit sandpaper, then some 400, and then I'm going to hit it up with some steel wool to smooth everything out before we put the bluing on. Now here is the cold bluing kit that I'm going to be using, uh, and I've actually used this kit before on this, this shotgun that I restored. Um, this is a gift from my father-in-law. He gave me this old shotgun so I could restore it, and that was before I was doing video, so uh, that's my biggest lament is that I don't have video to show you guys of that restoration. I wish I did. Um, but anyhow, that's what I used. I used this kit, and I'm going to use it here on this weapon. And hopefully it works out really great. We'll just have to see. The kit comes with a 
a rust and bluing remover. It comes with a degreaser. It comes with the cold bluing solution. It comes with swabs, sandpaper, um, some protective wipes. Everything you need to blue this rifle is right here in this one kit. I'm going to put a link to this in the description below. And you can also find a link for it in my uh, Amazon store, which is www.amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash Paul Udellis. Go there and you can find all the stuff that I love and I believe in and trust. If you've been with me for any length of time, you know when you do shop at my Amazon store, I do get a small stipend from uh, Amazon on anything that you purchase using my, my links. Uh, it's really not enough to, to make uh, much of a difference, but you know it all adds up in the end, and I just want to make sure that you are aware that I do get something when you use my link so that you don't think I'm steering you wrong or you know just trying to hawk a bunch of merchandise at you because I'm not. Everything that I list on my Amazon stuff is stuff that I love, okay? If I don't love it, I don't put it on there. So after I finished all of the sanding, I can get ready to start. And the first thing I'm doing, since I don't have any bluing or rust, is I'm going straight to the degreaser. And uh, I'm using this sponge that comes in the kit, and I'm just really cleaning this thing super, super well, okay? Because if I don't, it, I'm going to get a splotchy, ugly job with the bluing. So I really want this to be done well. And all you do is rub it on, wash it off, dry it, and repeat a couple times and then you can move on to bluing. Okay, so I'm basically putting the last layer of cleaning agent on here, the degreaser, and I'm just going to kind of wipe it down so it's not drippy all over the place. Then I'll go give the, the rifle a really good wash at the sink, let it dry thoroughly, and then I can come back and we can go ahead and start to put the bluing on. That should be a lot of fun. Now, I really can't say for sure, but I have to assume that the bluing solution is really just a, like an oxidizer, uh, like the chemicals that I use in the coin ring making when I'm going to put a patina on. Um, basically, you apply that to the bare metal. It does a quick oxidation to it and turns it black. That's what happens with the coin rings, and that's what's going to happen here. I don't know why they call it bluing, because your gun doesn't turn blue or anything like that. It turns kind of like a blackish charcoal gray but uh anyhow so let's go ahead and shake this up get one of the swabs and start bluing And away we go. Here we go. One, two, three. Look at that. Look at that. Look at it just instantly turn. Instantly. Now what I do here is I'm trying to be very consistent. I'm trying to keep the, the swab nice and wet. And other than, you know, trying to work around details, I'm trying to do this in really nice, long, smooth strokes, okay, to get even coverage of this fluid. Now, 
it's not the end of the world if it ends up being a little splotchy because we're going to uh, fix that in a little bit further on in the process. But I do try to apply this as smoothly and consistently and evenly as possible. See, I'm just nice long strokes rather than just willy-nilly all over the place. So I'm thrilled to death with the way this is working out. I really am. I am loving this. It's it's actually taking this and making it almost look more like a real rifle. Uh, before I let anybody leave the house with this, I would make sure there was a red tip in the uh, end of this rifle uh, so that people could identify it as a toy. But uh, I, I'm really super excited with the way this is working out. I'm very happy. And what it's doing also is it's making a decision for me. I am not going to put a decal back on. Okay, you, you know from my car videos, I have the ability to make all my own decals. No problem there. Um, I just, I don't think this is going to want it. I think it's going to look fantastic without it. So I am not going to put a new decal on here. Comment down below if you think that's a mistake. But that's my initial plan. Okay, so after I've got the entire rifle blued the first time, I will take it to the sink and I will wash it down well with just some clear water. And I'm back from the sink and I'm just going to dry everything off real well. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of unify the finish and smooth everything out with just a little steel wool. Okay, very light, very quick pass just to kind of blend everything in. And then once I'm done with that, now I can go ahead and seal it up with uh, one of these protective cloths that came in the kit. And basically, all I got to do is just kind of wipe the entire thing down. It's almost like oiling it uh, to, to add that protective barrier to the blued finish. But look at this. How nice is that? The kit worked great. It was only like $20, something like that, for the entire kit. A fantastic bargain so if you want to restore a, an old daisy bb gun or one of these 660s or even a real uh real rifle uh this kit really does a nice job Okay, so all of the component parts were dropped into my ultrasonic bath. Uh, I turned the heat on on it, and then I turned it on and, and ran it for about 30 minutes, and that cleaned everything all up. And now I've just got to do a little bit more, like the trigger has got some uh, deep tarnish and stuff. So I'm going to just sand that out with a real fine-grade sandpaper and get all of these pieces cleaned up uh, before I start putting the stuff back together. Now, although this is a, a vintage 660, it's not one of the older models. Um, if it was, it would have had a, a metal uh, cocking handle, but instead this is a plastic, and it's got a lot of scuffs and scratches. So I sanded it very lightly with some fine grit sandpaper, and now I'm going to just use the flits to bring back a little sheen to it and kind of smooth everything out before I put it back into the gun.
So we can finally go ahead and start putting this thing back together. And the first thing I want to do is I want to slide the main spring in the same way it came out. Once it's in and aligned properly, I'll use my screwdriver. I'll leverage it to take a little tension off. And then I can drop the stop in, hook it around that rivet, and boom, the spring is back in and ready to go. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the cog in for the noisemaker. And that just slides in and then the little axle pin slides right through the body of the weapon and through the little gear. And like I said, that grip is actually going to hold all of that back in place. All right, so that's all there is to that. Now we'll take the grip and I'm just going to align the the little hole in the grip with the screw hole, slide it on down and then screw it together and that will lock that all back up into place. Tell me, just go ahead and tell me, lie to my face and tell me that doesn't look amazing right now. The, the wood grips that they did, they did such a good job. They actually used two different colors of brown in the plastic that they molded those parts out of. And when you take that and couple it with the wood grain that they put into the, the molds and stuff, it looks just great. And with the blued uh, finish on the, the barrel and stuff, Man, I could not... You can't tell that right now I'm starting to get happy and excited, can you? So, early in the process, putting the trigger in is as simple as lining it up and putting a bolt through it, okay? It gets a little more tricky when we put the stock on because we have to make sure the springs are in the right place. But right now, all we got to do is just slide it back in place and bolt it in. Now we can pay attention to the cocking handle, and again, that just slides into place and is bolted in. Okay, it really just kind of aligns itself and does what it has to do, and there's not a lot to it. So we just put it in place, and like I said, for now, I'm using a, a nut and a bolt, and later I will hopefully switch out to some tubular rivets. So now here's the trickiest part of reassembly is getting the, the rear stock on and making sure that the springs attach to the trigger in the right place. The bottom spring is the return spring for the trigger itself. The top spring goes to the little latch that will catch the main spring inside of the uh, gun. And so when you're putting that together, you have to kind of not only get the stock in place, but you have to get both springs lined up to the back of the trigger. Once you've got that, slide it nice and tight, put in the first screw right in the top to hold it in place, and then we can go ahead and put a bolt through the side, lock that up, and like I said, later hopefully we'll change that out with a tubular rivet. Well, there she is, my Daisy 660 Ricochet Rifle, all cleaned up, looking beautiful, working great. Super happy, I'm loving this toy.
Well, here she is, all bridled and saddled. Man, does she look sweet, and I'm so glad I went with the cold bluing on this. And also that I left the stock and grip original. This 100 out of 100 times would be the gun I would choose for playing war. The gun looks great, it's fully functional, and it still makes a great sound. The only thing I would change would be using rivets instead of nuts and bolts. If I find good ones, I'll revisit this classic toy when I change them out. I hope you loved this video, and if so, I also hope you will feel kind enough to give it a thumbs up, click subscribe, and to shoot the lights out of the notification bell so you never miss one of my resto videos. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. I love to hear from you guys. Well, that should just about do it for today. Every day is a renewal. Every morning, the daily miracle. This joy you feel is life. Until next time, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying be good.